podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Thank you everybody for joining us today for our Search and Social Better Together webinar. Um, on the line here we have Megan Beam. She is the Vice President of Search and Social and Strategic Partnerships for Ad Taxi. So thank you so much for joining us today. She's going to take us through this presentation. If you have questions during the presentation, please feel free to ask them either in the questions bar or the chat box on the GoToWebinar control panel. We will try to get back to you during the presentation on your questions. If we're not able to get to all questions during the presentation, we will definitely follow up with you by email with an answer to your question. Um, without further ado, I would like to introduce Megan Bean and she'll get us started. Take it away, Megan. Great. Hi, everyone. Just bear with me one second. I want to make sure that I get the video all set up. Kenzie, can you hear or can you see me? Uh, I saw you a second ago. I think your face disappeared, though. There you go. Now I can see you. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Let me just get this situated. Technicalities. All right. Thanks, Kenzie, for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us uh, right before the busy holidays. I know it's a busy time, um, but really excited to share um, a lot of really great findings um, that that we've personally found and, and put together regarding why search and social are better together. Um, we're going to start here with our agenda. So first, uh, I going to take a few minutes just to go through some updates and what's happening on either platform um, across Facebook and uh, some of the search engines. There's It's been a year of change, um, the wild, wild west in some cases when it comes to Facebook and um, how they have adapted and how we need to adapt accordingly and then how the platforms are becoming a lot more similar they're definitely converging in terms of capabilities and so we're going to cover you know how we can adapt um, what the latest consumer trends are and then how we can apply those to being successful using uh, search and social platforms together um, to get to garner better results um, give better user experiences and ultimately win over the consumers through giving them the right type of experience that they're looking for today. So um, there I am on the right, um, just in case you couldn't see me today, wanted to just let you know um, a little bit about uh, myself who's speaking today, your host, and then um, I want to start out with a little bit about who Ad Taxi is, and just a quick brief overview so that you know what our value props are that have really led to our discovery of increased performance when we run both search and social for our customers and how we achieve that performance. So um, a lot of these things are things that we do on a daily basis uh, with our customers. We're going to talk a lot about finding the best audiences and using first party data across platforms to influence the most valuable customers and drive the most conversions for your investment. So um, a lot of these things that we do on a daily basis is really the basis for what we're um, investigating and talking to you about today. And then um, not only that, but um, who our partners are in the market. So we have strategic partnerships across the major search and social platforms, and they provide us with the most up-to-date research, product innovations, things that they're working on, making sure that we are implementing them um, as fast as possible and getting the best results out of them. Um, and so we're gonna be talking a lot about those product innovations today. Again, there's been a lot of them over the past year. And then we've even won some, uh, some awards for our application of um, both their innovations and ours in, in tandem. And so, um, we've implemented a lot of these things above and beyond what these partnerships have provided with us. So um, constantly innovating and, and bringing more to our customers. All right, so let's start with Facebook's year in review. Um, again, it's been a, a busy year for them, um, but really wanted them to focus on 
um, what that means for us in 2019. So we'll do the same with Google after social and tie it all together at the end. So this uh, should be no surprise to anyone. Um, Facebook's myriad of PR challenges from Cambridge Analytica and the data breach um, as a result to Russia's meddling in the election. Um, but really, you know, how did this affect Facebook's audience and therefore our ability to reach them and market to them effectively? So again, despite all of that um, that has happened, um, not quite in Facebook's favor, their usage wasn't necessarily harmed by the negative news. So in fact, usage is projected to increase year over year, uh, about 9%. And uh, we've got, we're showing 241 million active users in US and Canada. Um, and then eMarketer has 190 million monthly users in North America projected for 2019. So um, uh, the usage, you can see the nice usage curve going up on the left. And then on the right, Facebook is in red on the top. And it shows that the average time spent per day per Facebook user remains consistent. Um, so over the years, there's only been a slight drop, but even over the last three years, um, pro or projected through 2020, it's projected to remain consistent. Uh, Snapchat and Instagram are closing the gap there year over year. Uh, they're becoming more formidable players. Their audience is growing. Um, they're also adapting with a lot new, uh, a lot of new ad capabilities and um, more in terms of giving the user more um, in terms of video, um, producing their own content, etc. However, Facebook remains the dominantly used social platform. And in addition, advertiser revenue continues to grow at a pretty fast clip of 33% year over year. So as Facebook continues to focus on expanding their direct advertising solutions, um, as um, you know, there's there remains such a large audience um, to capture uh, effectively across industries. Um, we continue to see ad revenue jumping and um, expect them to still remain a really viable player for us. So in a in really in reaction to um, Cambridge Analytica and some of those things uh, that really revolved around um, consumer privacy, Facebook, um, their major change uh, this year was to targeting capabilities as a result, again, of those data breaches, which um, was the removal of third party targeting options from partners such as Axiom, Oracle, Epsilon Experian, etc. Um, so an estimated 500 or 5,000 plus behavior and interest type targeting options were removed from Facebook. Um, and essentially what these third party uh, targeting options were doing was following and tracking users online and offline behaviors and then allowing us to target those people specifically through Facebook. So they decided um, that in order to protect people's privacy better, they were no longer going to allow those targeting options. So um, that was a, a major change in 2019. Um, uh, despite having those targets removed, um, we really are projecting to see an increased emphasis on ads on Facebook's other properties, like Instagram, Messenger Stories, video placements, um, videos becoming more and more um, competitive as everyone's starting to produce their own content and vie for people's watch time. Um, however, you know, they're going to continue to emphasize uh, those means. Um, and then also at Facebook's Global Partner Summit this year, they indicated further development of their direct response ads that serve more specific verticals. So an example of this was um, their development of dynamic travel ads. In the past, um, I think, year or two, uh, those were released. And so they plan to do stuff that's more tailored to specific verticals. Um, and 
that's going to become a, a really big theme throughout the rest of our conversation here is around uh, personalizing things um, more to the user, but a way to do that would be um, specifically through verticals that um, a user is particularly interested in. Um, and they also project that stories, both on Facebook and Instagram, will surpass newsfeed traffic in 2019. So this is a really, really big um, projection um, in which I encourage everyone to get ready for that mobile and video revolution um, because it's definitely coming. All right, so here are some examples of the types of behavioral targeting that was removed from Facebook that impacted many of the verticals and types of businesses that we personally work with. And I'm sure um, that a lot of you here um, are also affected by. Um, and so we've actually seen an over-reliance from our customers on these types of kind of pre-built or canned types of targeting um, that have been worked because of this over-reliance, um, you know, they, they really found a gap in, in targeting and performance since these were removed. So we've been working with them to regain success through other targeting means. Um, and so we're going to talk quite a bit about those today as well. So we believe really strongly that the most important targeting method for social media today is creating custom audiences via your website or app traffic maybe it's your CRM data or your email databases, for example. So those are all um, examples of types of custom audiences that we can create. We then target those audiences for upsell and cross-sell, um, whether it's on Facebook, and we can actually do this across other platforms as well. And then we model lookalikes from your best customers and best performing custom audiences for more efficient prospecting. So we A-B test multiple custom audiences, um, find out which ones are performing best, reallocate budget to those that are performing best, and as a result, we can help uh, get the most efficient CPA possible for your investment. So these audiences can be really, really powerful. We're going to talk a lot more about the need for and the actual application of these custom audiences a little bit later on. But definitely, um, really important with the demise of all of those third-party targets. We can actually achieve a better result without them using your first-party data. All right, so that's um, really an update on uh, Facebook, where they've been, um, where they're going. And so let's move on to search engines, major uh, year of developments. Um, Let's just say there's a convergence towards Facebook and being able to better tailor their approach to the individual shopper and reach them at different stages of their purchase decisions beyond simply using keywords to identify their interest. So that's really where we've been. Um, we use keywords to uh, decide are they um, researching or are they intent driven, ready to buy. And we're going to tailor our campaigns based on are they researching or ready to buy. And a lot of us then focus on some of the lower funnel activities, um, simply, you know, using keywords to identify. So um, they've actually really been working on introducing several advanced targeting features this year and are emphasizing the ones that have been around, but haven't necessarily been used effectively. So they're going more of an audience route um, and so we'll, we'll talk about what each one of those are. Um, so the way that they're doing this is it's actually more of their, um, in most cases, first party data that they're actually using to almost create, it's almost like they're creating their own custom audiences for us to then be able to use and target and implement in our campaigns. Um, so for example, um, so they're both, uh, Google and Microsoft or Bing are the two examples that we're looking at here. Um, and they're really both starting to harness the power of their own data in more ways that benefit us as marketers and us as businesses. So on the left is Google. And they have seven properties that they own, each with a billion plus users. So that's over 7 billion users that they are um, tracking people as they move across these different entities. And they're able to, um, you know, see what 
they're doing and really start to understand what the intent of that person is, um, even if their intent is across multiple different categories or things. Um, and so then Microsoft on the right, they actually have 20 syndication partners with 400 million plus devices using Windows 10 and Bing is the uh, search engine that powers uh, Windows 10 um, as well as MSN, Skype, Internet Explorer, Cortana, etc. Um, and then they've got all of their carefully selected syndication partners um, that they are basically um, counting as their total audience. Um, the one that is not listed under Microsoft is LinkedIn. So Microsoft owns LinkedIn, in which they are now starting to capture LinkedIn users and identify what they're searching for on Bing. So again, they're using all of this data of all of these places that their users are going. And here's an example from Google um, and how they learn about the purchase intent of its users as they move across Google properties. So um, in this example, they have easily identified this person as a new mover. So um, as this person searched for new homes on Google, they also search Google Maps for their new commute time, um, looking at packing techniques on YouTube, and then continuing to search for other things like um, insurance. Um, and so, you know, something like this has several applications from uh, a real estate business to insurance to home furnishings to many more um, that can tap into this sort of intent and behavior um, insights that Google is now starting to provide for us. All right, so let's talk about what the advanced targeting is. Um, here's an overview of all the capabilities on Google, Bing, and YouTube that can help us reach customers at different stages of their purchase decisions, particularly trying to discern who the lower funnel um, people are, what their activity and intent is. So, um, RLSA is remarketing list for search ads. This can be applied to Google and Bing. This is kind of the most classic example of an advanced audience targeting feature um, across the search engines. And it's very much like remarketing on Facebook or retargeting across Facebook or display platforms. Um, so you can customize your search ads and your bids and remarket to people who have previously visited your site um, as they're continuing to search on that search engine. So you want to segment your RLSA lists based on uh, the buying journey. Um, and so one thing that is really important um, to note as we go through these is that you don't want to just implement these targets and talk to each one the same as the other you really want to take the next step to craft a message and offer um, a message and an offer that relates to the specific person's moment in time. So for example, you want to create a sense of urgency for um, RLSA cart abandoners versus um, an all site visitor, for example, um, or someone that is in market. And then you really want to tailor your bids and, um, you know, help us pay or spend our budget more efficiently based on where someone is at in the buying journey, whether they're lower funnel or higher funnel, just getting into um, researching. Because one of the important things also is to make sure that we aren't just getting in at the bottom of the funnel, um, because um, we'll talk a lot about um, consumer behavior today and not being a lot more open to new brands um, because they have so much access to discovery across all these different platforms, um, in particular social. So that's just one really important thing. And I think theme to keep in mind throughout this is not just um, taking the, the basic targeting feature, but how we use it most effectively. Um, Okay, so moving on, um, in-market audiences. So this is newer for both Google and Bing this year, um, but it's essentially a curated list of users that are in-market or lower funnel for a per particular purchase category. Um, and so you can target just that list or you can overlay that list with a bit adjustment um, to just 
pay more when someone that is in market is searching for your keywords um, because they are, um, you know, potentially closer to buying. So some example of in market audiences and they can get really pretty granular, which is, is really cool. I think it makes it a lot more applicable. Um, for example, if in the apparel and accessories category, we can get all the way down, not just to shoes, um, but to athletic shoes in particular, um, or for auto, um, not just uh, that someone is interested in buying a vehicle, but that they're interested in buying a pickup. Uh, or truck versus um, a luxury car, or a hybrid, or um, et cetera, et cetera. So again, getting more granular um, for home and garden, um, down to home furnishings, and even down to the living room um, category of furniture in particular, or um, in travel that someone is interested in a cruise versus another destination. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then similar audiences um, across Google and Bing, uh, I put in there, aka lookalikes. Um, so it's it's very similar. We want to um, figure out who looks like the people who are really engaging with your website, um, a custom audience list, um, etc. I guess I skipped customer match, which is important. That plays into uh, how we create a similar audience. Um, so going back to customer match, that's either uploading your first party data um, into the Google and Bing platform, either your entire customer database or um, a segmented database based on your best types of customers so that we can target, again, them. If they are continuing to search for something that you sell, we can um, continue to try and make them a loyal customer by um, reaching out to them and making sure that we're showing up when they're searching. Or um, we can, uh, you know, look for, for other potential um, products and make sure that that you're showing up for that. And then taking that customer match, we can also create similar audiences or lookalikes. Um, Life events is one that's really cool, uh, getting into a couple of new YouTube targeting features. Um, there's a super high percentage, and I don't recall exactly what it is, but it's I think like 70 some percent you could of uh, people on Google, you can reach on YouTube. Um, and, you know, they've done a lot with shoppable ads and things to make it um, more uh, call to action oriented and more direct response oriented, uh, much like Facebook actually moved towards uh, several years ago now. Um, but life events is really cool because you can reach people during major milestones like getting married, moving, graduating, um, purchasing or renovating a home. So again, a lot of applications for a lot of different types of businesses. And then finally, custom intent, uh, targeting people searching for terms on Google, we can then actually target on Bing. So we can find out what people are searching for on Google and sorry, target them on YouTube as well. So we can figure out what keywords are driving the most sales um, or the most uh, conversions, whatever those may be for you, and then target those on YouTube to just expand and increase the effectiveness. So that's an outline of um, the advanced audience targeting types that we're talking about. Here are some of the Google stats on the impact of using in-market audiences. So this is just an example of one of them, um, garnering a 28% increase in click-through rate and 48% increase in conversion rate. So they're showing a pretty great impact. Um, but what's really interesting is despite strong performance and the ability to customize messaging and really reach a lower funnel audience, uh, these numbers come from a December issue of Internet Retailer Magazine, in which they announced a survey um, that shows an inverse use of these audience targeting advancements to where the increasing majority of clicks are coming from on Google. No doubt, because users are getting ads that respond to their needs more quickly um, from those businesses who are actually adopting these features. So it shows a bit of a misalignment and um, that... Marketers are a little bit slow to adapt, so definitely something that you want to consider um, as these features are becoming more important and more intent-driven. All right, so pardon me one second. All right, so it's been a really busy year 
for Facebook and the search engines alike. So their adaptations are ever so important to consumers' wants, needs, and behaviors today, and how we can provide winning user experiences across search and social platforms. So there's no doubt that they see these trends. Um, a lot of these trends here, actually, that we're going to start with come from Google. So they, they understand what people are looking for in there quickly trying to learn how to adapt and then teach us how to be able to apply those. Um, and then we take that even a step further to make sure that we are um, using all of the uh, capabilities available to us across platforms to make them work even stronger. All right, so first we'll go through some of the current consumer behaviors and then how we as marketers and businesses can adapt. So people are turning to their smartphones at the top of the funnel. Uh, nearly nine out of 10 shoppers aren't sure of the brand they wanna buy when they begin looking. So again, I think this is a, a function which we'll talk about um, Social platforms and other platforms are lending a lot more for people to be more open to discovering new brands. So um, whereas, and it makes it a lot harder and less cost effective to all be fighting at the bottom of the funnel for those low funnel people, right? Um, so that's a, a pretty interesting one that may go against some of our intuitive nature in terms of marketing. Um, more shoppers are starting with a blank brand slate. So this goes again with number one. And just some really examples or uh, good examples of um, where we're seeing a lot of increase in search terms around men's watch brands, best purse brands, makeup brands, etc. So those are, you know, just some good examples of how people are actually searching for brands um, because they don't know initially what brand um, they want. So um, they're quick to bail. So this doesn't necessarily just mean um, quick to bail when they get a bad mobile experience, for example, that's still very, very, very relevant. Um, this, just a little bit uh, in, a, in a different sense, um, they're over 50% of smartphone users have purchased from a company other than the one they'd originally intended because another brand's info was more useful. So it's um, their access to that information and how helpful and useful is it. So we will definitely address that. Um, and then more research equals fewer regret, regret, uh, regrets. Excuse me. Um, so through a variety of types of decision making that people are doing, they're looking to curate their experiences beforehand. So um, I really like this experience is the new loyalty. Um, it's a key driver for consumers to return to a retailer's site or app. So in considering um, not only winning the business, but um, keeping a loyal um, consumer, it's really important to continue to give or deliver them um, a good experience, the, the right type of information being useful and being helpful. Okay, so um, now let's talk a little bit about how we adapt. Um, ultimately, as marketers, it's our job to understand and anticipate the needs of consumers and find ways to assist them in any given moment, wherever they're spending their time. So again, that's where we start to consider cross-platform. Um, people are always shopping for multiple things and across multiple categories, and this can be really overwhelming for people. Um, or, you know, they're, they're busy and they're going on with their daily lives trying to just accomplish um, the things that they need to. So as such, they're going to need as much help from us as possible, right? Um, providing brands an opportunity to get into the consideration set early on, given that we do it the right way. Um, since nearly nine out of 10 shoppers aren't absolutely certain of uh, the brand that they want to buy when they begin looking for information online, that's a really great opportunity for marketers who make the research process as easy as possible. So that means being present, so being present when they have a need, being useful, giving them the right information um, along the way. And then also consider finding ways to help overwhelmed shoppers keep track of the items they've researched. So how do we keep track of the products that they've been looking for and put them back in front of them? Sounds a lot like a remarketing strategy and um, particularly a dynamic one. Um, we want to 
not only help them keep track of what they've um, been looking at or researched, but we want to really pay attention to what their needs are. Um, so for example, we want to find out if they want to take a cruise versus find a specific destination and tailor their research experience to that specific thing. So um, helping to guide them through the con through to conversion, through remarketing and cross-sell opportunities. Um, we want to do things like remember their travel dates, send them relevant offers, um, and maybe even send them a shopping list. These are the types of experiences that more consumers are coming to expect um, and the types of experiences that earn their loyalty. So we'll talk about a couple of ways um, specifically that we can do this. Um, Personalization has definitely been um, a buzzword uh, in, the, in the past year, and I often hear um, customers just be really concerned about how hard it is to actually customize um, and create a custom experience for a user. So it's actually not as hard as we may think to start to adapt to a consumer behavior through the buying journey. We can simply use personalized ad copy based on how they've interacted with your website using remarketing and RLSA. And if you're an e-com business, implement dynamic ads across social and display platforms for retargeting. I mentioned when we reviewed Google's audience targeting, I referenced how to speak to users differently based on where they are in the buying journey. This is an example from our friends at Bing here, this image on the left, how to customize your ads using remarketing based on pages that the user has visited and how to increase bids based on their funnel position and the importance of in getting the conversions at the end of the day. So you can see as someone moves um, from the home page to looking at specific category and product pages to adding something to their shopping cart to then actually having purchased something and um, becoming a customer, how you can very simply customize the ads, um, reach them you know, with something on the site that talks about discovering um, new things or what's most popular. Um, these are big uh, tactics around the holidays as well. Um, holiday gift, um, giving items, things like that. Um, and then once they start to move through and show interest and um, um, yes. become uh, more of an engaged customer, uh, you can provide them with an offer if possible. Um, and then after that, a more sense of urgency or a more limited time offer um, and then free shipping at the end to get them to actually commit and then once they become a customer send them have you tried so give them um, another idea of something related to what they purchased that they might be interested in um, and then on the left these are just sample bids um, that Bing would potentially use but it shows as they move through the funnel how much more important they may be to getting the conversion and so um, increasing your bids accordingly will actually be more um, effective for you um, you know based on where they're at and what your likelihood of getting the conversion is. So personalization can be a lot easier than uh, we oftentimes think. Um, and another way um, that really plays into uh, personalization is the use of custom audiences. So we've talked about this now a few times. Um, when using customer lists, not all customers are equal in their value and should be segmented accordingly uh, to target who has spent the most, who shops the most frequently, and to increase lifetime value with upsell, cross-sell, and then to complement your offline ads. So for example, if someone doesn't open an email, how do you reach them on another platform uh, where they might respond um, differently? Um, so uh, once again, Use, using ad copy and dynamic ads to customize the message to each custom audience is a great way to implement some uh, level of personalization um, and, and make the customer feel like you're being more relevant, relevant to what their needs are and who they are. Talk to them if, as a loyal customer if they are, in fact, a customer that you're trying to get them to purchase more from you. 
Um, and so here's an example of how to parse your customer list or your CRM rather than just using your website traffic and who has added something to your cart. So those are pretty, those are more, more basic things. Um, segmenting your customers um, is, you know, definitely the more advanced tactic. Um, and um, you can also use a CRM audience for someone, if you're an uh, offer in-store purchases and uh, services rather than just an online product. Um, we have used similar segmentation across search and social, social platforms to effectively decrease CPA and increase revenue. So you can segment versus um, someone that has purchased online versus offline versus across both channels. That way you can create a message um, or an ad type that caters to their preference. So um, purchasing online versus giving them uh, store locations to purchase offline. Um, Re-engaging with um, active versus lapsed purchasers, so um, getting more out of um, your current customers, um, talking to people who are more promotional driven, um, so those that are that only purchase with you during a promotion or holiday, making sure to get them to come back and do that, um, and then focus on ways to potentially increase average order value. Um, and then product specifically purchased and when, um, so that you can, you know, if based on your typical buying um, or uh, time to purchase when they might potentially become a repeat customer. Um, and then uh, using all of that information to target them more effectively. And again, this can be done across platforms. So this is a quick look at um, types of ads across search, social, and RTB throughout the buying funnel and where you can optimize your message accordingly. We are going to now move into how to do this specifically with search and social because of the convergences we have seen across them and the results that we have specifically seen um, by implementing these practices. But just so you know, it's not limited uh, to search and social. All right, so let's talk about how they're better together. But once, um, once again, independently, um, search and social are a very powerful means to ROI. A 2018 study of senior ad buyers shows Google and Facebook specifically drive the highest digital ad spending ROI. So think about how powerful they are um, individually. And then we're going to talk about how um, they are, it's um, how much more effective we can be when search and social are managed and optimized in tandem, kind of like the, the duo you see speeding along here on the tandem bicycle. All right, so search and social both play a vital role throughout the entire funnel. Um, if you implement, uh, there are certain types of ad capabilities across each one that definitely reaches people throughout the funnel. But I argue from a user perspective, these are the platform's primary functions. So social is very much a discovery platform. So pushing a message to a highly targeted audience while engaging with content and being open to discovery. So um, consumers primarily are using it for discovering things while they're engaging with, um, you know, things um, that are happening within their social lives. Um, and then search is conversely to discovery, really about intent. So pulling users in during micro moments when they have a need and to fulfill that need. So, um, you know, just despite being able to re reach someone at either stage um, across these platforms, I think from a user perspective, that's why people are going to these platforms to begin with. Um, here is a um, Facebook study that backs up social as a discovery platform, and it shows an increase in discovery usage across social platforms, whereas search has decreased. And so that also might just be a nature of um, how the platforms are adapting and providing information um, to people, but, um, you know, it's definitely across 
social in general, Facebook and Twitter, they are increasingly being used to discover um, not only content, but specific websites. So uh, websites, products, and services. So again, this is important, not just to um, the content they're discovering, but actually discovering um, you know, new businesses and new brands and product opportunities. All right. So now we're going to look at a few different studies, um, one from Facebook, one from another third party platform and one from Ad Taxi in regards to how Facebook and search work together. This one is in particular um, a Facebook study. Um, that says face, people exposed to Facebook ads were significantly more likely to search for more cost-effective branded keywords and in some cases less likely to search for more expensive unbranded keywords. So um, those are more specific findings, but in general, um, people are discovering content on Facebook and it's actually encouraging them to search um, for that brand or product on a search engine. So um, Facebook ads are driving search behavior. So that is definitely one way to increase the effectiveness of your search campaign and then a more efficient cost um, is through having people discover, being able to discover your brand um, across Facebook. Um, and not only that, but those um, that traffic is incremental. So one of two incremental search referred site visits um, not only led to an incremental search on the search engine, but also an incremental action on the website. So these actions could include purchases, adding an item to a cart, and viewing specific content. So um, it's really helping make your paid search campaign work um, better and harder, and by have, getting people to discover your brand and continue to search and move through the funnel. So well, that's Facebook study. Um, this is a study uh, from a third party platform um, called Marin. They run both search and social campaigns out of one singular platform. And so what they, they looked at two things. Um, the graph number one on the left shows that cohesive search and social campaigns outperform campaigns run in silos. So they're saying that two times more revenue and clicks um, than search campaigns manage in isolation when they're run together. And then there's a 10% higher revenue and conversion uh, from search when managed with social. So this is just showing really starting to talk about how an integrated strategy um, can really have a lot of benefit um, in terms of your revenue per conversion and your, your overall conversion rates. Um, graph number two on the right shows um, that conversion rate and revenue per click increase significantly when customers interact with both search and social ads. So this is the more general people that are um, and businesses that are running um, search and social together have um, a six time have six times more revenue than people that only clicked on social and search search individually of each other. So um, what this shows is that search and social um, customers that run both get better results and then customers that run both of them within one platform or one uh, kind of cohesive strategy even outperform that even more. So we took a look at our own customers and uh, to see what the performance was um, and, and to kind of double check and, and see what was happening in comparison to uh, Facebook and Marin. So um, we took search and social accounts that overlapped. We looked at about 300. And what we saw was a 46% average decrease in CPA between search and social. So um, again, on the left, uh, search and social run independently and what their CPA is, and then a 40% decrease in the CPA of accounts that were running both together. Um, and so, you know, there, there are some uh, nuances here in terms of, um, you know, what the 
metrics are that are being measured across platforms um, and how they're measured. Um, obviously, so search, um, we look at more oftentimes as last click, whereas social can also be viewed as um, uh, last click or view through. Um, so conversions that happen after someone saw a social ad. So um, those uh, different viewpoints definitely go into these platforms individually, but um, there's a really pretty clear distinction um, in terms of the decrease in CPA when they're run together. So um, really strong performance, a lot of these things. Um, again, something that we've talked about is not just doing uh, implementing something or running a search and social campaign, but how do we converge them and use all of the advanced targeting capabilities and strategies across them to get even better performance. So in our last few minutes, we'll just talk about some of these strategies and best practices. Um, so again, when we talk about um, running them in tandem versus in silos. This really helps us to align the search and social business objectives or what your business objectives are overall and take the strengths of each platform and make sure that they're working together to achieve those business objectives. Um, focus on when they're run together versus in silos, we can um, really focus on a consistent brand message, value proposition, and promotions across channels. So again, making sure that that user has a consistent experience across the different platforms um, and touch points that they're going through throughout the buying journey. Um, Embrace intent generating touch points that occur earlier in a consumer's decision making process. So again, this um, can sometimes go a little bit um, is a little bit less intuitive to us wanting to use our budget in the most effective way possible um, and focusing on the lower funnel. So um, but actually, if we do in, embrace the intent generating touch points, um, when those people aren't sure of the brands that they're going to go with, we're going to get a more effective CPA um, in the end. And as long as we're making sure that everything is running together cohesively um, and then optimize towards the incremental revenue of target audiences across both channels. So how do we look yeah. at, um, again, each one, make sure each one is driving um, value and revenue as well as um, achieving its own place in the buying journey, giving someone a message that helps move them along. Um, and we'll again look at some of these optimizations that can occur um, specifically. Um, integrate custom audiences and focus on the highest value audience across both channels. So again, not all audiences are um, equal or of equal value. So focusing on implementing those audiences and using them to the best of our ability to um, get you the highest return um, at the most effective rate. All right, so um, a few specific tactical things that we can do across channels um, and specifically using custom audiences and focusing on the highest value audience across both channels. Um, so a lot of this comes down to how to use the custom audience and how to um, use remarketing across the different platforms. So these are, again, specific, specific optimization tactics that can be done across platform. So uh, create Google remarketing lists based on visitors from social ads. So create a, a Google list specifically based on those who have visited your site from social. So we know that person has had a specific experience. So we can use our LSA on Google or Bing to retarget and prioritize social audiences when they search for your keywords on Google or Bing. So um, again, it's all prioritizing that person, giving them a specific message and helping to um, get them to choose you um, through that really solid experience, um, making sure that we have that consistent message um, from social through to search and understand that we know that person has been to the site and is interested. Uh, retarget non-converters from Google or Bing ads with carousel, collection, or dynamic ads on Facebook. So um, understanding that someone has been to your site and not um, you know, treat it as a specific retargeting moment that's very low funnel versus um, uh, more of a 
prospecting ad or prospecting intent on Facebook, switch um, for that specific um, audience with to a specific ad that caters to uh, remarketing. Um, and then when a user converts on search, increase their lifetime value. So this is understanding when someone has just converted and, um, you know, it, it could go either way um, if someone converted on search or social. Um, however, um, just because of the, the visual nature, it, it really um, lends well to taking someone who converted on search, um, which tends to be more last click. Um, one of the big changes that Google has also done this year is introduced new um, uh, acquisition or um, different types of acquisition um, that we can use to target people. So that is non last click. So whether it's linear time decay, um, different things like that, but however, it's traditionally thought of as last click. So we take those converters and we send them a complimentary cross sell um, or upsell message on Facebook, um, either with, again, with dynamic ads, uh, carousel ads or collection ads, um, showing them complimentary products. Um, and it's best thought of to do this immediately immediately um, to get the best result, um, upsell, and then again later based on what your repeat customer data tells you about what that appropriate time is to re-engage with someone. Um, and then finally, use Google's customer match and Facebook's custom audiences to differentiate message messaging between customers and prospects and between engagers and card abandoners. So that's again just tailoring your message and helping to move them through the funnel very similar to what Bing had showed us um, in terms of what to do when um, someone just goes to the website for the first time to um, looking at product or content pages to adding something to a cart to becoming a customer. Um, and again, this does not necessarily just mean for an online or e-commerce business. This can be applied to any product or service that is offline as well. All right, so just some of the key takeaways. Um, first party data and ad personalization are critical today, but it can be done by simply tailoring ads with copy and dynamic creative based on the purchase journey across platforms. So personalization is key and we can find ways to start to adapt um, that is a little bit more simple. Take time to keep up with and implement ever evolving audience targeting capabilities and strategies. So um, things are changing really fast and uh, we've personally seen really slow adoption in the market. So um, really taking the time to either ask your current provider or ask us and make sure that those capabilities are being implemented. Um, there's a lot of things that we can do to test those audiences and capabilities first before even starting to add bid adjustments and other things on top of them, um, just so that we can make sure we're finding the best audience and the best way to use your um, investment and budget against it um, so that we can truly start to move towards these incremental results. Um, brands that are deemed truly helpful will rise above the competition. So again, um, as people are, are busy, they're looking for multiple things at any given time, making sure that we understand what they're looking for, um, either through what their search behavior is or what they've engaged with on your site, um, and then continue to tailor all of the um, subsequent ad messages and experiences across platforms um, to exactly what they were interested in and even go a little above and beyond to create content that is more helpful um, is really going to help you win in the end. Um, and then finally, of course, um, search and social are powerful independently but become magical when they're more seamlessly integrated and use advanced audience targeting to move customers from brand neophytes to brand purchases and loyalty. So we, um, you know, we've seen a 40% decrease in CPA by implementing some of these tactics, and we hope that you see similar, um, similar experiences and can use this to help continue to evolve and um, adapt to uh, current customer needs and platform capabilities that exist today. So it's only going to continue to get greater and we're really excited to be there along the way. So um, that is all I have. Um, thank you again so much for being with us today and please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions or there's anything that we can do to help you.
Great. Thank you so much, Megan. And uh, we the question always comes up, are you going to be able to see this presentation later? We will be sending out um, this recording to everybody after this presentation. So uh, stay tuned and look for that within this next day or so. Thank you so much for joining. We'll see you next time. Thank you.